Hey, everybody. Very happy to be here today. I have my very special guest, my good friend, Stephen Wilson. I think Stephen doesn't need much of an introduction because everybody knows who he is. But on the very, very off chance you don't, uh, Stephen is an incredible musician, has had more amazing projects than I can count, incredible things, and most recently uh, has been focusing on his solo career. And um, and here he is today with us, very pleased to, uh, to be able to hang out and have a little chat and uh, have everybody with us. Hey, Stephen, what's up, man? Very good. Uh, likewise, thank you for having me, Joy. Where, where, was that, uh, where was that live clip filmed, by the way? Where, where was, was it that? filmed? I'm not quite sure. It was one oh, of the okay. one of the places that we were back in the days when uh, people good old were on days the road. When, when we could actually go out and, and interact right. with other human beings. Yeah, yeah. it's it's nice that we have these clips to yeah. uh, to remind, yeah, remind us of me. such days, right? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. No, I'm good, man. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me on. Oh, it's such a pleasure. So. I don't know, like we have so many things that, that we, it's from 2011, first of all, we can say that. That's okay, when so that clip was. But there's so many um, things to talk about. You know, we don't have all the time in the world, but we'll, we'll just jump right in. I mean, you and I met when um, we were both on tour together. Uh, you were touring with your band. I was touring with my band. And um, it was a long time ago. Uh, and I remember actually, you know, doing the Dream Theater shows and then, you know, usually when you're out on the road, if you have an opening band, you're not really paying much attention to them. You know, I'm sure you, you know the feeling. You're kind of like focused on what you do. But my ear was being caught by your music. And, and uh, I remember, you know, because of that, I, we, we, you know, started a chat and I met you and mm. I think we became pretty fast friends and found that we mm. had a lot in common. Yeah. So yeah. So that's when um, that's when our so that was, relationship that was started. Two thousand, I think, was it two thousand? That that year was the, yeah. we toured together. I think so. Um, yeah, I just I remember. Yes, I remember us kind of bonding over our love of stuff like Ortaka and Aphex Twin and uh, talking a lot about electronic music uh, before before and between sound checks. Yeah. Right. Totally. Yeah. And we and we still love that. We still talk about Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I mean, people always ask me, you know, about where where I think the music, you know, where music is at now, what's cutting edge, and it always kind of comes up that I always think of you because, you know, to me, the stuff that's really cutting edge, probably more cutting edge than anybody, than most people can even deal with is stuff like, you know, Autecra or Aphex Twin or all that kind of stuff. You know, that, that music is... Yeah, is I mean, I think we definitely live in an electronic music. world now, you know, the the, yeah. The, the sound of music has definitely moved more and more to well actually the sound of the world we live in let's let's be let's be honest here the sound of the world we live in is very much the sound of an electronic you know it's an electronic world we live in now the sounds that come from our phones our devices our laptops um you know everything is electronic we're constantly surrounded by electronic sound and i think a lot of the sort of contemporary music now reflects that you know a lot of music now whether you like it or not kind of reflects the world we live in we live in an electronic world so a lot of these other sounds that you and I grew up with are, are perhaps not so relevant to to you know to young to a younger generation yeah. who've grown yeah. up in this electronic world. But I'm I'm you know I'm fascinated with the kind of fusion of the two. I, I still think, you know, there's a really interesting sort of you know sort of netherworld where, you know, modern production techniques, modern electronic techniques can be applied to to rock music. And I guess that's kind of that's kind of what I've been trying to pursue in the last few years, particularly. Yeah, that's so awesome. I mean, I can totally relate to that desire to do that because personally, I feel that that particular fusion hasn't really been seen through. Like that whole taking kind of the spirit of what we do, like in the progressive, you know, world with chords and rhythm and all that, but adding the kind of colors, the kind of sounds that that, like you say, people yeah. are hearing and what's out and the possibilities. So they think there's a lot more, you know, space to kind of like discover and bring in new kinds of fusions. Yeah, and I, I think I think it's been tough for a lot of the older generation of not just rock musicians, but also fans of classic rock have found it very tough to mm -hmm. engage with mm -hmm. modern electronic sound. And I understand why, you know, some of it is you know, very kind of alien to me, very hyper-processed, 
um, very mechanical. It doesn't have a strong emotional, it doesn't have a strong harmonic element, a lot of it either. So I think it's, you know, like you say, there hasn't been a lot that's kind of tried to bring the two worlds together. There's been a few. Yeah. I think yeah. Bands, yeah. Like Massive, a bands like Massive Attack. Right. Um, yeah. And stuff like Boards of Canada, which is, to me, has got a very emotional quality to it, Boards yeah. of Canada. Uh, yeah, also, yeah, people yeah. like Trent Rez, Fanaticus Ross. You, actually, a lot of stuff in the soundtrack world. Mm, um, right. right. Pro probably fuses the two things better than, than in mainstream pop music. You hear so oh. much soundtrack work these days where, you know, they're kind of working with a sort of traditional music vocabulary, orchestral sounds and piano yeah. sounds. But then there's all this sound design element too, isn't there? Which I which I think uh, is really absolutely. exciting, and I hear more of that in the you know t in TV and movies than I do, you know, in the commercial music world in a way. Yeah, I mean, I guess there's that f there's a freedom there. You're not trying to create like a song. Yeah, exactly. You're not locked into any particular yes. genre. You're just trying to express a mood, and therefore you can be creative of course the catch with that is a lot of times that music is really background like and you know just kind of serving a purpose yes. which is not a bad thing however you know like my main interest in my musical life is having it be the experience rather than necessarily having yes. having it play a, a, a background role yeah. I wonder. I wonder if I wonder if that thing is a generational thing that there will be a generation that's coming now of music fan that is more um, used to the, both those kind of extremes, you know, the electronic world and the more organic yeah. world of <clears throat> performers and musicians. Because I think mm -hmm. that's part, been part of the problem. There's a very distinct, uh, you know, the classic rock fan doesn't acknowledge a lot, mm -hmm. I think, a, a, a lot of the time. They don't acknowledge the world of electronic music and vice versa. But I wonder if the generation to come will be more used to that kind of fusion and we will start to see more music yeah. that kind of fuses the two. I would kind of imagine it because our ears are getting used to such new sounds. Mm. Like I was thinking about, I don't know if I heard this or read it, like you were, you were talking about some of the new thing, new pop music you were listening to and getting inspired by, mm. like, um, like Billie Eilish, who I just mm. listened to her new album recently. Mm. And while it's not like electronic music, there's this really really super high production value that allows yeah. her to be creative in a way that you couldn't be before and i guess what i mean by that is yeah. like i noticed like she's so quiet like every little breath yeah. you can almost yeah. hear her thinking i like the production and the, the level of clarity is so intense that it reaches yeah. a level that we don't that is a new it's a new thing i don't remember it, that, that yeah that is that definitely before. a new sound yeah that's definitely a new sound i think you're right she even though the music is not strictly electronic it has somehow an electronic sensibility to it right, um right. and i think that's going to be the future um where you have a lot of music which is still played with real instruments and you still feel the personality of those performances mm. but there's something that's more it's got more of an urban electronic sensibility about it and although I don't like a lot of that music, I definitely yeah. can appreciate it, um, which I think is what you're talking yeah. about when you listen to Billie Eilish. You can appreciate there's some real kind of painterly artistic temperament there. It's not yeah. just processed. Yeah. So, much, so much modern pop music just sounds like a computer right, wrote it Right, to me. exactly. And that's what Probably I... Probably because what, it did. Well, yeah. it, totally. Like, the, you know, the whole drum machine uh, kind yeah, of concept yeah. where you hit the button and it just kind of plays a beat and it's cold and static and all that kind of stuff. But this, you know, the kind of production we're talking about that exists on a Billy Eilish album is this doesn't really have to do with that kind of cold sound of anything. It, it brings you further into it. Yes. It gets and I think warmer. that's, that's yeah. And I think that's the beautiful thing about That's one of the great myths, isn't it? About electronic music that it's cold and it's very, very exclusive in the sense wow. it excludes people. And I don't think that's true. I've always found, you know, electronic music when it's done well, is as can resonate emotionally as much as anything you know and and there is such a there's such a thing as a very warm inclusive inviting electronic sound Absolutely. And, I, and i and i do hear that i do hear that and i hear I hear electronic music i think the bottom line is it's finding music with a strong personality because so much music and i don't think i don't think it's fair to just say that about electronic music i think music in general so much of it is what you might call fodder, just generic. It's like, oh, it's a another death metal band or a another mm, mm. hip hop band or <clears throat> a another, you know, it just, right, it sounds right. very generic. 
And yeah. it's all you. I think as a music listener, you're always looking for that thing that somehow the personality comes across right. and kind of resonates with you and engages you with the music. Absolutely. And I think that's that's definitely happening more now in, in sort of electronic pop music, I think, for me yeah, anyway. That's so cool. Hey, um, I want to talk a little bit to everybody because right now we're like going out on YouTube and Facebook and we have kind of this worldwide large audience. And pretty soon uh, we're going to break it down and go to my Patreon only. So actually, I should say that if you are not part of my Patreon, please do check it out. It's kind of an inner circle, very cool world, allows me to uh, interact with all of you and will allow people to ask questions of Stephen and myself if you like. Uh, so do check it out. The link is uh, is on your screen. But I wanted to tell people um, and just kind of bring them in like to our world, like together over the years. You know, it's been a lot of years and we've done a lot of things, but a lot of times through the years we've interacted uh, and, you know, just want to um, make people kind of aware of that and share that. We've had some fun. One of my great memories is uh, when you called me up and you were getting ready to do a Blackfield tour. You're like, Jordan, we need a band and the band will be you. <laughs> so, right. How much fun was that? Yeah, right? it was really yeah. fun. It was not. It was really nice. So I got to program kind of like, you know, a lot of sound within my keyboard and support you and Aviv. And uh, that was that really was cool. Great. Yeah. Yeah. I really yeah. enjoyed that. Yeah. We did. We did some quite small venues. It was very intimate. It was very intimate. It was almost. It's like an unplugged kind of vibe, wasn't it? Right, yeah. Right. The EU and the Yeah. Yeah. It was really nice. And um. And the other memory I have is that, if I'm remembering this correctly, so I think I opened up for you guys at some shows on a different tour, right? Was that Blackfield also? It was, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah. I think you had taken yeah. the band at that point, but you wanted somebody yeah. to open up, and you had invited me to do it. And so I got to go out and do kind of like a, whatever it was, a 40 minute like piano right. set and then you would play. So we get to hang out. Yeah, those us. were great fun. We need yeah. to do that again one day. Yeah, I know. Yeah. We got to do that. And then, of course, um, you invited me to play on a couple of your solo albums. Maybe you can tell the listeners if you remember which ones they were. Yeah, so you so, played on you played on my first couple of solo records, <clears throat> um, Insurgentes and Grace for Drowning, and I did phenomenal work on those. And the only reason I don't know if people know this, the only reason you didn't appear on any of the subsequent ones is because you hooked me up with Adam Holtzman. Because I remember calling you up and saying, um, Grace for Drowning after we did Grace for Drowning, I called you up and said, Okay, Jordan, I'm gonna find, I'm gonna go out and tour this now. Right, right. And I, know, I know you can't do it, but I need, I need someone that can do what you yeah. do. And and you said, well, you know, there's this dude in New York called Adam Holtzman, and he used to work with Miles Davis. And um, right, right. And that was a great hookup, and I, I'm eternally eternal yeah. grateful to you for that. Yeah. yeah. So that's, um, that's one of the things I do. <laughs> yeah, fantastic. Yeah, share Put the love. Together. Share the love. Um, well, one of these days, one of these days, just for the record, I'd love to uh, to you will to, to you do will. it again. Yeah, I'm here for you, buddy. I'm you here will, for you. Yeah. That would be really, really fun. So, um, and the other thing I want to um, kind of like point out before we leave the the larger audience is that you know you do so many very very cool uh, remixes, and what's what's really fun for me is that a lot of the albums that you've kind of like brought to life again are the ones that meant the most to me. Mm -hmm. Like, uh, didn't you do freehand? I did. did That's just come out, yeah. actually. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. today, I think today is the day that freehand was released in 1975. Wow. So we're really? We're okay. celebrating that. Yeah. It's a terrific record. Yeah. 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 I had a lot of fun with that. Yeah. Yeah. And well, I actually, the fun... Go ahead. Go ahead. What? I said the funny thing is that I do. Yeah. I, I've remixed a lot of the Gentle Giant albums because I kind of do it as a trade thing between me and, oh, and Ray okay. Shulman. Because yeah. I don't know if you know Ray Shulman now, his job mm -hmm. these days, he, he was the original bass player and one of the, right. one of the principal mm -hmm. writers in Channel Giant, along with Kerry Manier. His job now is he authors mm -hmm. Blu-rays and DVDs. Uh, he runs an authoring oh, wow. house. Uh -huh. So he does all my authoring. And in return, I say, OK, well, send me one of your albums and I'll remix it for you. So we kind of do this tit for tat thing. Yeah. And um, that's that's, you know, it's been a pleasure to work yeah. on that music. It's terrific. Yeah. Right. Terrific music. Yeah. yeah, I'll never forget visiting you at your place, and I got to hear one of the Gentle Giant albums that you were mixing in surround, right, right. there, which was really cool. Right. Yeah. yeah, I mean their music is so perfect for surround. 
because of that vertical complexity. You know, a lot of music, you know, a lot of progressive rock music, for want of a better expression, is kind of horizontally complex in the sense it's lots of bits that are simple in themselves, but they're kind of strung together. You yeah, know, that's the great right. Floyd thing, isn't it? You know, everything's very simple, but the way it's structured is what gives it its weight and its complexity. But Gentle Giant is the opposite. It's like everyone is doing different shit all the time. So it's that, <laughs> idea, it's that idea of counterpoint. I mean, it's a world I don't understand because I never studied music like you did. You probably understand it mm. better than me. But that idea that you can have counterpoint yeah. and people doing different things. Right, and it right. all locks together to create that. Whole. So That's in awesome. surround, that is a yeah. gift. Because now you can put all what that guy's doing in that corner, what that guy's doing in that corner, yeah. that guy, and you can hear yeah. all the different parts and how they interlock. And it's so it's re really been a gift for, yeah. for surround. Yeah, I want you to take one of my albums and mix it in surround. We got to talk about that. Bring it on, yeah. Yeah, no, that would be awesome. So, um, yeah, I'm going to actually, uh, we are going to wave goodbye to the YouTube and the Facebook crowd and invite them to the Patreon, where we will continue our discussion and answer questions and hang out. But uh, it's been lovely seeing everybody and having everybody join us for this chat. Um, I should say, Stephen, is there anything that you might want this larger audience to know about what you're doing before we take off? What uh, you want to leave them with um, the final final word? I'm doing the usual. I'm doing the usual. I'm 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 making new new music. I've got two new records on the go, um, both pretty big conceptual you know works and um, and a lot of remixing. So what we were talking about a moment ago. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've been doing and I've been stuck in the studio for the last two years. So it's been <laughs> in some in some respects, it's been a very productive. Yeah. productive time so lots of things on the horizon let's just say that yeah awesome awesome all right everybody so uh thanks for joining us and now we're going to switch over please do check it out and Stephen, hang out there and the engineering team is going to make the little transition now and then tell us what